I'm Alex Fedosev, CEO and founder of One World Online. And we are starting our regular monthly webinar for the month of March to discuss our progress, share the news, tell you about our accomplishments and plans, and answer your questions. So if you please look at the agenda, so we're gonna talk about the team members that are on the call. So here are team members on the call. Next to me is uh, Bailey Blair, based in Wichita, Kansas. She joined us uh, about a month ago uh, from uh, SMT Media, and she's running operations and business development with a very strong experience in the media, and including advertising and dealing with the big media corporations, media holdings. Then Brodovich, head of product management out of Palo Alto, California. Anastasia Westphal, our marketing manager, also from headquarters in Palo Alto. And Leonard Jackson is uh, our support manager who is dealing with the community and uh, covering many questions related to customer support. So let me go through the um, summary from my perspective, what happened in the last month. I would say that we continue building a lot of value, all team members on both product and business side. So you will see details, but I'm very happy about the team performance overall. On the product side, we're doing regular product releases. And we got quite a few nice product improvements in terms of the widgets and their styles and functionalities. Coins showed up in the footer now when people can see them and convert right there in the widget. There's quite a few dashboard improvements and this list goes on and on. I'll let them cover it in depth. We get, uh, built in our crypto cluster, a set of websites that cover both traditional business as well as blockchain, crypto, ICO. So it's really nice blend. I'll let Bailey talk about that. The crypto exchanges with the support uh, for marketing. So not only we deploy our widgets on the sites, but we also help uh, to run a really nice campaigns. We call them Boost ICO, which is a space uh, with a lot of excitement. As uh, big players are not no longer supporting ICO promotions, Google, Facebook, and Twitter, they all out. So it uh, opens a huge opportunity for companies like OneWorld to do it in a more innovative and uh, custom-oriented way with attractive elements and nice uh, interaction with audiences okay and then we developed some new exciting channel partners which is probably premature to talk today but i want to give a heads up that we have uh, no less than five deals in negotiations and channel partners are very powerful because then you get inherit essentially a whole big footprint of existing uh, deployments and that's what one world is very focused on we believe in both we know that we can launch directly through the widgets on the sites but Launching the channel partner with a, a serious traffic is even better. As a matter of fact, I want to mention that we have a couple of folks on this call that are essentially our channel partners, in particular Immerse, a great company from Texas. Everybody is welcome to take a look at what they're doing. Uh, and there are quite a few other applications that we are partnering with that do amazing things. Various engagement and um, other nice apps, mobile and web. All right. So with this, uh, I want to go to regulations update and let you learn about what's happening in the US because that's our primary market. And of course we are a California company. So we're watching very closely what's happening in terms of regulations and new legislation in our country. So the good news is that for the first time in a series of official documents, we see that in 2018 economic report of the president, uh, US Congress uh, seems to be very positive about cryptocurrency and there's a whole section covering it. So they talk about the importance of blockchain and importance of crypto uh, use cases coming on top of it, such as token economy. Of course, there's a lot of words about that there should be balanced, there should be protection of uh, investors and transparency in the way how the CEOs, ICOs are run and executed. But the good news is that the, um, everybody agrees that this is a very innovative trend and uh, there are many benefits of adopting these technologies. Next slide I want to show you, it's a recent hearings in uh, US Congress. The Financial Committee continues its activities and this time there are quite a few congressmen from different states and four experts presenting to US Congress and talking about the cryptocurrency markets, including the chief legal officer from Coinbase, uh, people from academic, um, uh, couple of people from small companies. And that was really, really interesting discussion. We can see two sides of the story and why some people really believe and enjoy being part of this blockchain revolution. And some people are very reserved and they see issues and uh, 
challenges. But overall, I would say it was 50-50. There's definitely consensus that we need better regulations and we need to develop the rules. Uh, so this is all um, very interesting hearings. Uh, I really recommend you to listen and watch if you have time. Or if not, just read our digest and social media because we usually cover them quite well. Talking about what's happening in the US, in Europe and some other parts of the world. There are some quotes from these hearings where people talk about innovation between Coinbase, uh, the Coin Center, Georgetown University representative and the, uh, some legal firms. They all talk about the need of uh, better regulations and better rules and why it's important for US economy. So I, I think these um, quotes are quite powerful. People definitely recognize the need of uh, getting the legal framework around this new thing. And uh, one thing I want to mention, since we participate in many events, we dealing with uh, quite a few top firms, there is a growing consensus that cryptocurrency requires a new asset class. And that's how it could be regulated going forward. Because using just Security Act from 1933 or taxation uh, norms back from 2014, even so only four years ago, but still quite obsolete. We need something better and the new asset class would be uh, the right direction. And some states already moving forward, like state of Wyoming already uh, established rules at the state level. This is one uh, remarkable uh, letter that was also written by congressman to SEC, the Security Exchange Commission. You see uh, Mr. Tom Emmer, a uh, congressman from Minnesota, and he's a very strong advocate of new token economy and uh, uh, very articulative. I think people like him would be making a big difference going forward because they absolutely see the need for US economy to adopt this new innovation, create more jobs and uh, be part of the exciting future, not avoid it. Uh, like you probably know today, a lot of ICOs do not accept uh, American investors because they don't want to be subject of scrutiny by SEC. And people like uh, Tom Emmer, they absolutely want to fix it and uh, get uh, essentially consensus about um, how this should be regulated going forward. And I can summarize it in a, in a few bullets that, yeah, we just talked about the there's still uncertainty, especially between two regulators, SEC and CFTC, but uh, with the pressure from states that are already making good progress and um, all um, expert community, definitely there is a trend to modify the rules that uh, look very old and obsolete. And especially big players come into the picture like KPMG and PwC, they all recommend them to adapt blockchain and related applications because uh, there's an enormous business opportunity. So what we're doing at One World, we uh, continue managing our tokens through two allocations, the managing uh, reserve, which is uh, really targeted for new opportunities and some forward looking projects and the mining pool that goes to publishers and partners to facilitate our business and get more deployments. And the core corporation is focusing on uh, the business as usual. So we continue developing our functionalities and build uh, advertising opportunities and then do commercial polls and some other interesting use cases on top of it. So very much like we wrote in our white paper, we keep doing business as usual. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, which I think is very important, is not one world is doing everything by itself. We interact with a lot of uh, ICO and post ICO companies that go through the same experiences and same challenges and we build uh, very strong ties with them. So includes, including integration in their products, including exchanging ideas and best practices. So we really are on the mission to build a coalition of companies that provide real value and become on the next um, generation of innovation in US and globally. Because uh, the old uh, big companies sometimes are not really covering the market needs and they become an, um, not as exciting as before. Look at Facebook, look at Google or LinkedIn. This has become a really old innovation and old news and there are plenty of great companies coming to the market and we partner with quite a few of them. So with this, uh, let me transition to Dan and talk about the product updates. Thank you very much, Alex. I'm uh, very happy to share some of the great uh, and exciting updates uh, we had last, about the last month. So these are uh, four main areas we've been focusing on uh, for the last month. 
uh, first of all, uh, we uh, have developed our new Polonas, Pol, uh, Sanad, uh service, uh, which allows us to run a programmatic ads uh, with four widgets. Uh, so I would say now we can spread uh, our widgets uh, through the uh, infinity number of publishers and uh, reach pretty much any location uh, around the world. I'll show more about it later. Um, we also have uh, implemented our points uh, into our widgets and make it very uh, visual. Uh, we uh, launched our mobile uh, widget updates, uh, including all the uh, improvements which we had uh, before our web widget before. And uh, we also had uh, significant system administ uh, administration enhancement to actually uh, run our deals uh, more smoothly. We have a lot of uh, ICO deals in the pipeline and we have a lot of uh, new publishers join and uh, all of these uh, partners they need a better uh, management and understanding. Here you may see how Polis and Ad actually works. So you can see on the uh, right side uh, uh, the uh, uh, or widget is on a smaller format is uh, 300 by 20 uh, 300 by 250 uh, uh, format which can be implemented on a, as a regular ad and it shows up to four times better uh, uh, CPC conversions uh, which is gives us great opportunity to promote the uh, regular prod uh, as a regular ad advertisement uh, to run regular advertisement campaigns and of course we're having um, a lot of bigger players such as google facebook linkedin and uh, uh, others leaving the uh, ico advertisement space we have a huge demand in our pipeline uh, of uh, companies uh, wanting to use, uh, who want to use uh, one world widgets to run uh, the campaigns. And now we can uh, satisfy this need. Another um, a huge update, which uh, I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, is actually making our points uh, and tokens be visual uh, for the new users uh, who can now see our um, in a very, uh, let's say, uh, visual way uh, uh, that for every action they take with the user or widgets on the third uh, uh, party websites, um, uh, they can see how they're actually earning the points which uh, they can, can convert later into tokens. And this actually uh, uh, should significantly improve our conversion rates and uh, uh, more importantly this actually bring more users uh, into participation into uh, our uh, one world ecosystem so uh, that eventually uh, supports our uh, token economy and uh, all this activity actually supporting our bigger vision how to make uh, one world token uh, uh, really um, be a part of our ecosystem and actually uh, be backed by real revenue, by real deals, which uh, uh, oh, we are working on. So uh, as you may see that uh, we have a circulation of uh, both of financial flow from all the deals we are having, where 10% of revenue uh, transfer to the uh, back to the exchanges or to, to back uh, one world tokens and so that means that the one world token is not just uh, like most of other cryptocurrencies which are um, back mostly by trust by uh, people who uh, who believe that it worth anything uh, we're building the uh, a real thing where we are actually backing one world token by some of our revenue which the company receives. We believe that the stronger demand for one world token there should be and more partners will be willing to accept this token uh, since it has uh, some real uh, value back in it. Yeah, thank you, Dan. That's uh, tremendous to see our token economy developing and um, the use cases and uh, the product updates. And folks, I really encourage you to take a look at our um, system live.
we have links on our web page. If you go ico.onerldonline.com, there are quite a few links there that live and you can check them out. Like San Francisco Examiner, MMA Weekly, and quite a few other customers we're running for years now. M many of them, probably most of them now, have this feature in the widgets. So you can see your coins or points first coming up. Every time you engage, you vote, you share, they uh, show up in your system. And then at some point you convert and you can put your to uh, earned tokens into your wallet. So this is very encouraging and uh, very much in line with our like general feeling that everybody should be rewarded for activities online. There will be more features coming up, but uh, what we have today is uh, very remarkable. The widgets are looking very modern and very stylish with this redesign. And you can see uh, the links to the actual articles that originated them. So please check it out live. Uh, I'll probably show you towards the end some live links. And now we are moving to the business update. We do have some exciting updates from the business development world. The first of which is the launch of new websites. So what we've been doing is trying to increase our footprint and increase the amount of traffic that we can purchase within crypto specific publications. And with the recent uh, restructure of how Google, Twitter, Facebook handles all of these advertisements, this is giving us quite an edge to be able to go to these other unique publishers and help them to maintain their ad revenue and build upon this new opportunity that they have. In addition, these sites are already known to be frequented by these highly invested, um, highly engaged audiences that have a history of investing in uh, participating in ICOs. So what we are doing is we are taking ICO advertising straight to investors. We are stopping the middleman. We are stopping um, giving Google any money. We are ready to work directly with ICOs, directly with publications, and we have um, great partnerships lined up on both sides. That's where we go into the ICO boost campaigns. So as we've lost those major publications that have been sharing this information, we are wanting to position ourselves as the first offering for advertisement in ICOs. We have the opportunity to take out even those that have been continually advertising, such as Reddit, because with our product and with our presence, we can get a higher CPM than Reddit is able to pull with its own website. So as these things move forward, we will not only be a solution for ICO marketing, but also a solution for programmatic advertising in uh, the crypto world. That's kind of where we're going with our strategic partnerships. We're developing an entire ecosystem. So in order to get the token out and get it in circulation as we all want, we bring on these advertisers and we bring on publishers in order to get them working in our token economy. And that's something that Dan and Claudia have been fantastic at pitching and that is growing exponentially. What we can do there is grow our public footprint out in the world through high-end traditional publications. We can show what we do there. We get an interest and we get a buy-in on the token side. The side that you see right now is the most important crypto cluster that we have running. You'll see investing channel. We also have coin market cap and the Times of India as uh, some of our flagship publications. What we're doing here is not only partnering with them to increase their revenue, but bringing them quality advertising and an advertising experience that is pleasant on the page through these streamlined widgets to be able to not only fill their advertising 100% of the time, but to begin to court a different market and let us help them establish these additional revenue channels. Logan's been running ad operations for quite some time and has made huge strides in the very recent past. So I'm going to turn this over to Logan to explain a little bit. Hi, oh, so just a couple of action items completed from the advertising operations world this month. Um, we've done a complete overhaul of our ad delivery system. Uh, we used to be running on a previous third party setup that was sort of, um, a lot more of controls were on the end of a third party rather than our end. So I'm happy to say that we've switched to a 100% self-controlled ad stack, which is now set up to promote a higher degree of competition between all the participating buyers we have involved in it. Um, so when we first started switching this over, we started with just um, one programmatic ad partner 
just AOL, um, giving them sort of all of our inventory that we were unable to fill with any direct campaigns. Um, what we've done now is added on um, multiple additional demand partners such as Zakendo and Sumato who have completely been integrated into our SAC and we've established some new relationships with other major ad buyers such as Adstera and Native Ads and Be Real Time. Uh, what happens when we add these ad buyers in is we promote a higher degree of competition for pretty much any advertising inventory we have. So we force these buyers to compete with each other and with our direct ICO campaigns, which produces a higher rate of revenue per each ad impression we're able to serve, ultimately leading to higher revenue for the publishers we work with and higher revenues generated in our ecosystem. So that's a large thing that we've been doing is uh, really establishing strong relationships um, with all of these ad buyers and getting them completely integrated into the ad stack. Um, in addition to the ones that we have solidified, I have ongoing partnership discussions with an additional three further large ad buyers and a pipeline of about 15 more. So. There's a lot coming there. Uh, we've also established a standardized ad provider optimization practices, such as floor rates and order options. Um, really, it just goes back further to the point of squeezing out all the possible revenue we can for every single ad impression. Um, in addition to everything we've been doing with programmatic, um, one of the main points of what we've been working on is the establishment of direct campaigns for advertisers in a manner to compete with the programmatic ad stack. So this goes back to what everyone has been talking about with us working with um, ICO campaign advertisements in general. So what we do here is we work with these directly and pretty much the advertiser is the full reason for programmatic ad buying, which means the larger amount of money is going to come from there. So when we're working with the people with the budget directly, we're able to put these in to our programmatic ad stack in a manner which it takes our higher paying ads, which we're receiving from direct partners, and sort of forces those to compete with our programmatic ad stack which ultimately raises the yield that we receive from programmatic as they will attempt to bid higher to sort of bid against and win traffic that direct campaigns are normally going to win. Uh, this is really big and has been a, a fairly easy setup on our side. Um, set up standard practices to really keep these going and get them set up quickly. Uh, Aside from the direct campaigns, we've also established ad quality monitoring and processes to keep our vendors happy and keep our uh, products on pages longer, keep better relationships with our publishers, and further best practices such as ads.txt. We've probably doubled the amount of domains we are working with that are compliant with the initiative over the last month. Yeah, so these are CPM increases from February through March, and we could just see that CPMs and revenue are consistently driven higher as a result of what we've been talking about. More competition between newly onboarded ad buyers, both programmatic and direct, and through cooperation with digital advertising best practices such as ads.txt. So the more competition we add and the more standardized we're doing things, uh, the better results we're going to produce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Logan. This is a very impressive. Yeah. And just to summarize, uh, both Bailey and Logan, they came with a very strong background in programmatic advertising on top of serious uh, high-scale de deployments of uh, similar widgets in the, their previous company. And uh, really, really happy to have them on board. As you can see, there's a dramatic difference in our ad operations. And the fact that Logan just mentioned that he's combining direct campaigns, kind of blending them into the programmatic ad stack. This is remarkable because essentially two different products that uh, normally work separately. There's a programmatic flow, which operates by its own rules and direct campaigns, which usually just take number of impressions that purchased and execute. 
But what he made is remarkable. He's optimizing from both ends by using direct campaigns as a tool to drive up the programmatic CPMs. Yeah, this is exactly what the type of um, innovation we need to do, not just technology, but also operational innovation. So really, really happy about this. Thank you, Logan. Yeah, great, uh, great job. And uh, the graph uh, says it all. <laughs> we all believe in metrics and numbers, right? And this is uh, very impressive. Of course. All right. Happy to be helping. Yes, yes, thank you. So moving to the next topic, uh, please, Anastasia, take over. Yes, uh, hello, everyone. I'm, I'm very excited to share our news in uh, social media and uh, PR. And let's start uh, with our press re release, uh, uh, which we distributed recently about crypto's uh, exchange listing. And we got covered on top Bitcoin and FinTech media news, such as CoinSpeaker, Bitcoin news, um, and we also got around 1.5 uh, um, thousand mentions on Google News. So we got viral. Um, also, we have a lot of uh, activities going on on our Medium blog. And within just one month of account creation, uh, we made uh, our stories uh, to the top 20 most popular on Medium. And it's... Uh, were a big success uh, for us and um, we gained uh, 3.3 thousand followers and uh, around uh, one, uh, 122 uh, thousand claps uh, for all our stories and uh, around 200 comments. Uh, also, we have uh, very uh, great news um, uh, regarding our growth on Telegram channel. We just passed uh, 8,000 members. And the more you support us by liking and sharing our updates, the more people learn about One World Talking and contribute to its growth. So we really appreciate all your likes, uh, shares, mentions, and comments uh, that you give us on social media. Moving on to the uh, analytics of social media, uh, here is uh, Twitter insights. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, really good engagement rates uh, and uh, we, our channel is growing. Uh, we just passed uh, uh, 7.6 thousand followers on Twitter, which is our main source of news. Here's a Facebook insights. We've got uh, 24,000 likes and we have a lot of impressions uh, and engagement here. And uh, LinkedIn, our professional network uh, channel. Last month we had around 800 members, but now we have uh, more than 3000 followers on our LinkedIn page, uh, where we share all the company updates. Moving on to the event participation. Uh, so uh, this month uh, we had very productive uh, productive meetings uh, and uh, participated uh, in events uh, globally. Uh, for example, uh, our CEO Alex, uh, he went uh, to Russia on a business trip and he had a very successful meeting at Crypto Communa Accelerator. As you can see on the right picture, uh, he's shaking hands with uh, the uh, CEO of uh, <clears throat> Center of Blockchain Com uh, Competences. Uh, also, um, Alex was invited as a speaker at two events uh, um, at Kiritsu Forum uh, at North, uh, Northwest Angel Capital Expo in Seattle. And uh, also just uh, this week, uh, he was uh, speaking at ICO and crypto panel at US Angels um, in Silicon Valley. And uh, this was pretty uh, pretty productive uh, event and we had a lot of contacts uh, and potential par partnerships uh, from this event. Um, and let me tell you about our plans uh, uh, in April. So next week we are going to attend uh, one of the biggest blockchain uh, forum in Silicon Valley. And Alex again is gonna be uh, a featured speaker there. Uh, so he's going to speak about ICO, uh, blockchain, and uh, crypto industry and share uh, his experience and one world uh, um, impact on uh, this uh, uh, crypto world. Uh, 
Um, then um, we are attending Amazon Web Services Summit, which is happening in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, in the end of the month, uh, we are uh, going to attend, again, Kiritsu Forum. And it's going to be a crypto and ICO panel um, in San Francisco this time. And we are, we are going to be sharing all the news and updates from this event on social media. Uh, so please uh, stay tuned and uh, support us uh, with our uh, participation. Thank, Thank you, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as you can see, uh, the uh, results also speak for themselves. It's a tremendous job by Anastasia and other colleagues that are involved in social media and managing new content and new updates. Uh, the community is very engaged. Everything is growing, so you can see it's exciting times. We're jumping from one high to another in terms of following on all various social and professional networks. And one quick comment on the, our relationship with Amazon. You probably know that um, it's the biggest uh, hosting solution in the world, AWS, Amazon Web Services. We are one of the companies who's using them from day one, back in 2011, when we started the company in 2012, when we went and uh, in the independent path and uh, started operations after developing the prototype. We took EC2 reference design from Amazon when it was just very fresh, very new. And now we're running it for almost six years. And we are considered uh, to be by Amazon one of the best cases about how architecture is done and how it's built from ground up. So they asked us actually officially to be the reference for new customers coming to use AWS because our architecture has a scalability on all the fronts. We automatically scale CPU power, we automatically scale uh, memory when needed. When the system uh, increases the load, everything is configured to auto scaling. We have a really nice architecture with microservices and Amazon uh, sometimes asking us to test their new beta products, which we always do. So these relationships are going above and beyond just participation in summits or being part of the same event. We have pretty close technical co cooperation with them. And now will be the official referral when they bring new customers, especially for certain architecture. Then one world is one of the golden example, if you will. So I'm very happy about this. And uh, they are great people, by the way, the folks in Silicon Valley and San Francisco, the AWS West Coast team is great. So we'll continue this dialogue and you probably know why we're doing this. So this is technology and more. So with this said, let's go to the next uh, section. I'll give the voice again to Dan, please. Thank, thank you, Alex. Yeah, before we go uh, deeper into exchanges, just a quick disclaimer that pretty much states that uh, one world uh, token is not a speculative asset and it's uh, main use case is to be uh, circulated uh, within a uh, one world uh, ecosystem. So please bear this in mind and uh, let's get to the dates. First of all, we were uh, listed on Cryptos Exchange and despite of taking a uh, uh, it deep uh, with the market, as you know that markets are still experiencing a uh, correction this month, uh, I believe it's uh, been uh, or around uh, 60 to 70 percent for ethereum are uh, down and it's uh, uh, almost 50 percent for uh, bitcoin uh, one world token was also affected by this correction but uh, now you could see that uh, we have a level at this point and the trading is uh, done in the corridor of course we cannot promise uh, anything regarding the token price uh, uh, but it's a common practice that uh, right after the company is listed, uh, um, the token takes a, a hit for some time uh, before it gets the significant uh, value and grow uh, trajectory. Um, and especially when the markets uh, are in a correction, it's also uh, take us an effect. But uh, we are super excited uh, to be traded and being one of the top trading currency on the on the uh, cryptos exchange and cryptos is one of the most secured exchanges out there 
uh, as uh, maybe you were aware, uh, we were working to uh, get listed on Jobit, but after having uh, some security uh, and uh, I would say con uh, complaints from uh, our community and the external communities, uh, we decided that uh, there is a risk, uh, a reputation risk to be uh, listed uh, on Jobit involved since Jobit is uh, uh, having some significant technical issues uh, uh, which uh, result in a, a very bad customer experience of uh, users losing their tokens and not being able to uh, get the support. Um, so um, I believe that uh, we will postpone our listing on this exchange at least uh, till these issues will be uh, solved and uh, then we might uh, reconsider uh, our appearance uh, on, on, on this exchange. And uh, you were aware that we launched uh, an amazing campaign which uh, actually involved uh, tens of thousands of people. And we brought ourselves uh, 9,000 users who were actually uh, came to the platform to support us. Uh, but due to the number of uh, uh, technical uh, difficulties from the BZ side, uh, the registration process was very complicated and only 3K were actually able to pass it. But uh, due to the uh, technical issues on, on uh, BZ side, only 500 were actually able to support us. So one of the common issues uh, which uh, our uh, supporters experienced uh, were that uh, their documents which they submitted uh, were not accepted uh, or uh, for one or another reason and uh, they could not pass the verification process. They also had a significant issues with two-factor authentication where the code which comes to their phone uh, from Bidzi uh, would not actually work uh, on the website to actually pass the authentication. Uh, website was down, uh, Bidzi website was down for over 12 hours in the final day of the vote, which actually also reduced uh, the number of uh, supporters uh, who were finally confirmed or being able to pass uh, uh, to factor authentication after spending hours uh, with their support uh, members trying to fix this issue. And uh, one, the last one, which was extremely frustrating for a lot of supporters, that even after they went through all this complicated process of registration and supporting one world, uh, VTC tokens, which are used on the platform to vote for the new listing, uh, haven't been issued to them. So uh, it was a very frustrating experience uh, for, for uh, our supporters and, uh, um, and uh, eventually uh, One World uh, as uh, uh, six other companies who were actually uh, in the uh, voting process at that time uh, didn't reach the goal, the target amount and uh, VTC tokens uh, will be returned to all the supporters uh, who supported our listing. Um, and uh, as for now, due to these uh, horrible technical issues, uh, BTC is uh, not uh, uh, working on the uh, uh, voting campaigns anymore. So they, they canceled it, at least before they'll fix all these uh, uh, technical uh, bugs uh, which uh, uh, we and other uh, participating companies were experiencing. And uh, we are working on getting listed on new exchanges at this point. We are under communication and uh, uh, consideration for following exchanges. I'm sure that uh, a lot of you will know Binance. It's one of the biggest exchanges in the world uh, with uh, 1.5 billion of trading volume. Uh, there are some other um, uh, well-known and all exchanges such as Kraken and despite of uh, not adding a listing uh, a new coin uh, to their exchange for almost uh, one year uh, they're considering to um, get back um, uh, and start listing uh, new, new coins again and uh, uh, one world uh, is uh, uh, potentially uh, in the list.
uh, we are also in communication with uh, Bbox and KuCoin, where um, we believe that having two or three exchanges, it's a pretty good uh, uh, number to support or talk in economy and to make sure that if there is anything uh, like technical maintenance on one of the exchanges uh, or any other issues uh, or token economy and uh, one world will, would not be affected by that. Yeah, thank you, Dan. And I want to mention just that Kraken out of this list is the one that we have relationships for a long time. If you remember from my CEO days, we had quite a few people involved. One of our support leads, Jamil, he came from Kraken and was a tech support person there, really knows the system in and out. Ayako Miyaguchi, the VP of Kraken. Uh, she was our advisor back then, and now she's leading American Japanese Blockchain Association and still has connection to Kraken. And we're talking to their team in San Francisco. They're very interested in working with One World. They explained to us how excited they are about uh, adding new tokens to their platform. It just, they were so deep into addressing their technical challenges for the last few months. They did not add any tokens for a while since May last year. So as soon as they change the policy, we are one of the first on the list and we definitely want to go through this process and uh, get listed on Kraken. For me, this is one of the top um, exchanges in the world and even though they had some technical issues, but they absolutely have uh, high volumes and uh, good history. They're one of the early exchanges out there. They're international, they're everywhere in terms of support. Uh, people are supported in different countries and in different um, currencies. It's not just US dollars, they have Euro, they have uh, Japanese Yen and uh, quite a few good positions. So we would be happier to be one of them going forward. So all this for uh, interesting, but Kraken, we have relationships too. So that's in addition to Dan's update. And um, yeah, thanks a lot Dan for driving this. I know this exchanges is super difficult to deal with because there's a lot of things in development and sometimes the processes are not mature. And that's why getting on a really high quality crypto exchange, I think it's a, already a major accomplishment. And we'll be careful selecting the next one and um, get going step by step as always. But this is exciting. So we are now traded. You can check our rates and pretty much all the popular applications, including coin market cap and mobile apps that monitor performance of different cryptocurrencies. So one world is part of this world now in to full extent. So with this, uh, we move into our Q&A session. I just want to say a couple of things that continuously come in from our group discussions in Telegram and WhatsApp about how people can participate and help one world to grow business. So we're organizing two programs which we might link together, maybe not, it's a work in progress. But I'm very excited that um, there's a VIP discussion group that just started recently. And we're inviting people who want to help One World to bring customers on both supply and demand side. So either advertisers or publishers where we can work together and of course incentivize people with tokens or even revenue share down the road. Very similar, we want to build a really uh, democratic widget boost campaign and the idea is to make the creation and placement of widgets super, super simple. So literally people will have access to a family uh, or set of widgets that are already predefined and ready to go. And all they need to do is just pick up uh, the uh, one line of code and drop it on their site. And it will be up and running. So this will help us to boost the deployment, the footprint of One World, but also give people an opportunity to try it out for free, of course, and uh, see it live. And if advertising will be plugged in, then start enjoying the revenue share. So these two programs are in development and between Bailey and Anastasia, I asked them to support them. So we're definitely gonna give you more updates next month, but I want to make sure that we are focusing on growing business. It's uh, like Dan said, we're not about speculations. We're not security token. We're all about utility token, but a very understandable clean use case and the programs that uh, allow it to grow quickly and very similar how we increased our following in social media tremendously in the last two months now we want to repeat the same success in the growing our commercial deployment which is kind of based on the same principles so please join this program as soon as you see our announcements in our communication channels and yeah we'll, we'll take there and these are the channels i recommend you continue watching webinars of course telegram community 
Telegram news channel and all the social media links. So please come and like and share when you can. So thanks uh, very much for joining. I appreciate uh, your interest in One World and uh, please stay in touch with our system online and watch our social media and join us next time in April. Thanks uh, for joining.